What's up everybody, it's Charles. In this video, we are going to be doing the very first service on the Golf R. We're also gonna be using an oil extractor and we're gonna compare how much oil we get out with an oil extractor versus if we would have taken the drain plug out. So the Golf R has hit that magic 5,000 mile mark and it is time to do the first service. Now I know you're saying, Charles, the first service isn't due till 10K and by the owner's manual, you would be right. However, I'm going to be doing the services every 5,000 miles on the car. So for our 5,000 mile service, it's going to be an engine oil change, filter change, fluid top off, and we are going to be rotating the tires along with it, and of course, setting the tire pressures. Now I mentioned we're gonna be using the oil extractor. This is really how these engines were designed to be serviced, which is awesome, because that means we don't have to get up underneath the car. Now I still recommend getting underneath the car and inspecting everything, taking a look and make sure you don't have any leaks or anything like that. We're of course gonna rotate the tires, so it's coming up anyway. More importantly, what I really wanna do is compare how much oil we get out of the engine with this thing, versus the drain plug method. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna extract as much oil out of the car as we can with this, which should be right about six liters, give or take. Then we're gonna take the drain plug out and see how much was left. Now, a couple things on using the extractor, which if you want one like this, I think this one came from ShopDap. I'll drop a link down in the description. You really wanna do this with the engine warm. If you do it with the engine stone cold, these things take forever and the pneumatic ones are even worse. So you do want to have a warm engine. It's also a good idea to know how much oil the engine holds so you know whether you got it all out or not, or at least the majority of it. All right, so here's what we're going to be using today. We have our OEM oil filter. We're going to be using the OEM first fill engine oil as well. There's some confusion on what oil is the correct oil for the car. Now the owner's manual says to use 5W30 or 5W40. The repair manual says 5W30, 5W40, or 0W30. And the car itself actually says to use 0W30 and 50400 spec. So this is what we're gonna go by. I called Volkswagen a couple of times just to confirm that this is in fact the correct oil. And finding this local wasn't super easy, so I just went ahead and bit the bullet and got it from the dealership. We got some coolant in case we need to top that off. And then here is our oil extractor. It came with a bunch of series of hoses, so we're gonna have to see which is the right one for it. I'm guessing it's gonna be the one that's probably this size right here, because it's a pretty small opening. And what we do is we take this hose, we remove the dipstick right here, and we put that hose down in the dipstick hole, and then we pump, pump, pump away until we uh, can't pump any more oil out. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna run our car for about three minutes, shut it off, let it sit for a minute, pull the dipstick out, clean the dipstick off, then we're gonna go ahead and put it back in, lock it all the way down, and slowly remove it again. This will allow us to check our oil level. Now it's right at the top of the hash marks, right here. This is actually probably a little bit overfilled. Really, you want to target for right in the center of the hash marks. If you do that, you're good to go. On the cars with the oil level sender, especially the diesels, if you initially fill it where the top of the hash marks are, you're going to end up overfilling it when the car gets hot. Full capacity of this engine is 5.7 liters or right at six quarts. So that's about what we should be getting out when we do this service. Before we do the oil extraction from the dipstick funnel, let's go ahead and change the filter first. That way, if there's any oil in the filter housing, when we loosen it, it'll all drain back into the crankcase and we can get this engine oil out too. We'll start by removing our engine cover. R for race car. All right, let's go ahead and take our filter out. For that, we're gonna need a 32 millimeter socket or if you have one, an inch and a quarter. Inch and a quarter is what I've always used. And we just very slowly loosen it. That was not very tight at all. This should not leak any engine oil while we loosen it, as long as we go nice and slow. If you put a power tool on this or like go speed demon on it, then you may spill some oil. But if we just do it nice and slow, should be good. All right, once our filter is loose, I like to take an oil absorbent towel or something, or even a shop rag's fine. Slowly twist, slowly pull up right into our oil absorbent rag. If you don't have one of these, have somewhere to put this filter unit before you take it out. We have this little valve that's left behind. It depends on what engine you're working on. Some of the older ones, this was actually supposed to be attached to the oil filter housing. On this one, it's two separate pieces. The old ones had a little ball and cup that the 
valve piece and the oil filter housing connected to, this one's just like a little locating tab. So if you have this style and it stays in, take it out so that any oil drains back into the crankcase and then just put it right back in. If it has a ball and cup style, take it out and snap it into the oil filter housing. Here is our oil filter housing with old filter. Let's go ahead and install our new stuff. New factory filter and new O-ring. Now, normally, if you're doing these on good oil change intervals, this filter just comes right out. If you are doing extended services, this may be a little bit challenging to remove. It still will have some oil on it, so I wouldn't like set it on your fender or anything like that. Next, we'll remove our O-ring. You just throw it over there, apparently. Take a little bit of engine oil, lubricate our new seal. Gently walk this seal around. Be careful with this seal here. I've seen many of these pinched, creased, rolled. We don't want to do that. It's got to go right here in this bottom channel, right? Right here, right here, right here, right here, right here. Once we have our seal right there, let's go ahead and put our filter in. You should be able to go either way. I always like to put them in here and then snap them into place. Usually you'll hear a very positive snap All in. Right, once we made sure we removed our drain valve and then put it right back in to drain the oil out, let's go ahead and put our filter in. Not a bad idea to take a little extra engine oil Go ahead and lubricate that. Make sure the threads are also clean. If the threads are dirty or boogered up, it can actually let oil past it and cause a leak. So we just take this, we rotate it down, go ahead and snug it up by hand. And luckily, our torque spec is written right on the top, 25 Newton meters plus five Newton meters. I'm gonna do it to 25 Newton meters and see how it feels. And we'll go ahead and do another five. All right, that is torqued. Clean any oil you may have spilled. Hopefully you didn't spill any. You can even move this fuel line if you want. If that makes it a little easier, especially if we're cleaning up engine oil. I'm not even mad if you hit it with a little bit of brake clean. Just make sure you re-secure the fuel line when you're done. Now here I like to go ahead and put the engine cover back on. That way it doesn't get forgotten. Now let's go ahead and extract that engine oil. What we're gonna do is we are going to find the hose that best fits down the dipstick tube. Because that's a pretty small opening, like I mentioned, I'm guessing it's going to be the smallest one that we have. We wanna go ahead and remove the dipstick, clean it off, we're gonna set this to the side. Next, we're gonna take our thin hose that's a little bit rigid. We're just gonna go right down the dipstick funnel. Now, you may have to kind of go up and down a little bit to really find that bottom spot. You want it to bottom out. If it doesn't bottom out, what happens is it hooks and goes back up out of the engine oil. So you kind of want it to bottom out. You may have to twist it a bit. Once you get it at a spot where you're like, yep, yeah, that's good, that feels good, it may not be a bad idea to throw a mark on it so next time you know where you need to go down to. Then what we'll do is we'll take the other hose that has this fitting on it right here. This fitting goes onto the pump unit itself. The other side hooks into the hose we just installed. They just slide together like that. We'll take our pump unit, pull our handle out, Slide this in and it has a little twist lock on it. So we'll go ahead and lock that into place. You can see it locked into place right there. Then all we do is we pump away until we have no more oil. Now, once you start pumping, it'll actually retain suction. From time to time, you may have to recharge the pump unit with a few more pumps, but at least you don't have to pump the entire time you're trying to extract the oil. And it's not a bad idea to periodically Go ahead, pull the tube out, and put it back in. Make sure that it's still pulling oil. And when the hose starts to get wiggly, you might be done. So I got as much out of the car as I felt like I was gonna get. The full factory fill is 5.7 liters or six quarts. Our little jug here is actually marked and graduated in liters all the way up to six. What does that mean? Well, it should be just about full. Let's check and find out. We can kind of see right here an oil fill level line. Let me get my light. We can definitely see it there. And right here, millimeters above it, is the six liter mark. I think we got just about everything out of the engine. Let's go ahead and put it up in the air, take the drain plug out and see how much is left. All right, so got the car up in the air. Next, we're gonna take the drain plug out, but some goober 
put an all track belly pan on his Golf R. So now we have like 35,100 bolts to remove. On a plus note though, the all track belly pan is awesome and reinforced and really helps with not having to worry so much about that composite oil pan. So let's take this off. Oh, this is awkward. Oh, there it goes. Check this out, stage five, reinforced. Right, so here is our drain plug. This is kind of a weird one. It's not one that you have to like loosen with a wrench. It's kind of like a half turn drain plug. So we're gonna take that out. I got our measure cuppy thingy and we are going to drain it in here and see what we get. Hopefully it's not much cause I can't capture much. We might just end up making a big mess. This is just done with a flat blade screwdriver, by the way, super easy. It's like a one full twist. All right, I dropped the drain plug in, but that's okay. And we will just let this drain out for a few minutes, see how much came out. I also have a new drain plug that we're gonna be installing. I'm gonna just let this drain until it is not a steady stream anymore, until it starts to dribble out. Now, if you were to have the car up on ramps, this probably would drain a bit more out, or at least it would drain a little bit faster. All right, so we're getting the oil to drip out now. Let's go ahead and put our new drain plug in. No need to worry about torquing this down. It's got a locking position on it that once it hits it, it's tight. Go ahead and clean that off. You hit it with a little bit of brake cleaner if you want. Just make sure it's dry and that the drain plug's locked in place. All right, so here's the amount of engine oil we have left after using the extractor and then taking the drain plug out, actually. Let's take the drain plug out. Oh no, our readings are screwed. So that's less than a half a cup. Let's see, we got uh, milliliters on it. Let's go ahead and call that right about 100 milliliters of oil that we left in the pan. Okay, so now the question is, are you comfortable leaving that behind? Is this the difference between taking the drain plug out with the engine hot versus the engine cold? Is this the difference between letting it drain for 10 minutes or letting it drain for three minutes? All good questions. You're also probably thinking, Charles, this is the sludge that was left in the bottom of the crankcase. Why would you wanna leave this in there? Well, for one, we're not going to be doing extended services on this, so there should never be sludge in the bottom of the engine. And two, if we have the car all warmed up, all that sludge is probably circulated through all the oil anyway. It's not like we're taking the pan down and cleaning the pan out. We're simply just looking at the difference between the extractor and the drain plug. So what do you think? Is this amount enough to justify taking the drain plug out? Or are you comfortable with this much oil getting left behind for hopefully the next service? All right, time to get some oil in the car. I'm going to be using a funnel to fill the engine oil in this car. The oil fill hole is in a weird spot and it's ridiculously small. This one also requires a small adapter that we're gonna use. There we go. We got six quarts to put in, so we're gonna underfill it just a little bit and then check the level and top it off as needed. If you have super good aim with one of these liter or quart bottles, then you may not need a funnel, but I like to use it anyway, mostly so I could just set it there while I open the next one. All right, got one left. I'm gonna only put about half of this one in and then top off as needed. It's always easier to put a little more in than to pull a little more out. It's about halfway. Go ahead and take our funnel out and our adapter. Go ahead and put our cap back on. Put our dipstick in. Now let's get the garage open so we can start the car up, let it run for about three minutes, let it rest for a minute, and then we'll check our oil level. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna shut the car off and let it sit for about a minute so that oil drains back into the oil pan. We also need to make sure we have our car on level surface before checking the engine oil. This looks like we're just below the hash mark, so we're gonna go ahead and add that extra half quart of engine oil and then recheck it. Typically, you don't need to start it back up, let it run and shut it back off and let it sit for a few minutes when just topping it up. This puts our engine oil level right smack dab in the middle of the hash marks, which to me is the perfect spot for it. And we're not making microchips here. So many variables play into it. If you're a hash mark over mid or under mid, that's totally fine. 
rock on with that. Now, because this is a mid service, I'm not gonna be resetting the maintenance light yet. I'll do that at the 10,000 miles, and I may actually at some point reset that maintenance interval to 5K. Now, what I have left to do is check the rest of the fluids. Coolant looks good. Maybe top off the washer fluid just a little bit. And I'm gonna go ahead and rotate the tires. I'm gonna do that front tires to back, back tires to front, reset the tire pressures, and then the car's gonna be good to go. So there we have it, 5K service all wrapped up. Pretty excited, I already got 5K on the R. Now it's time to do some more fun, go fast parts rather than just boring old oil change maintenance -y stuff. With that, I'm gonna wrap it up. Questions or comments, drop them down below. So here's my question to you guys. Will you use an extractor knowing that you're leaving about 100 milliliters or so left in the oil pan? Or is that not enough? Not even to worry about. Drop those comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll talk to you again next time.